My name is Karen Milne and I'm teaching um, graphic design students, uh, advanced diploma students of uh, digital media and graphic design. Um, and the subject that I've um, developed in eLearn is Design Culture Issues 2, which uh, is about a, a background in design, uh, why things look like they do, uh, influences and uh, relevance to current design. These students are mainly visual learners. Um, they respond to images, um, so I've introduced those into the site. They're a mixed bunch, um, mature age students, young students, internationals, uh, so the site's been designed for simplicity and visual appeal to engage them. I designed it for them to visit a lot. So there's, there's repetition of patterns, so it's always easy to navigate. I've tried to sort of keep it consistent, so each time they come in, they uh, see the same, same banners, same, same definition of a new topic. The banners I've used in here are a little bit of a visual clue, I suppose, to the content that's coming in. The little subheads here relate um, a simple way to sort of define where we're going and what that content's going to be about. So each week or each subject has been set out uh, the same way. So the image, the, the area that we're looking at and, and a brief rundown of what's involved. This part of the content is really straightforward too. So this week it's read about the history of, complete the revision quiz, watch some short movies. They're all directives, they're very simple, um, set in three lines, action verbs. Um, there's not a lot of reading here, it's embedded in resources. I'm learning for my students, it, it works well, these sorts of things, little personal comments, that's great, thanks. Um, those things uh, I get feedback on. Um, if I acknowledge their posts or acknowledge things they've done, that's quite important. Uh, little quizzes and games, if they can go in and see the results they get for them and then I acknowledge the number of people who've done them on eLearn, um, it seems to work well. I'm amazed how how um, how chuffed they are with those. Yeah. If you talk to them on this on here, if I'm going to give resources, I where, where possible I'll make those visual too. Just like this one, um, technology timeline. They'll I've got a students will sit and look at this. They'll zoom in on it as much as they need to. Um, it's a to unpack it, whereas if this was in the same, the same information done in text, I'd lose them in a couple of minutes. So, um, information graphics or combinations of images that are text and image work best with my guys. One of the one of the really useful things on eLearn is going into participants, and you can see who's been watching, who's been looking at what resources, and you can evaluate the effectiveness of your resource. Um, some of them, students are going back to a number of times, they're getting a lot of value, and others, they pass them by. So you can go in and, and, and look at that, see what's wrong with it. That's how I refine what goes in and how I re revise what I put in. It's also anecdotally from students, things they find useful. Um, I'll definitely stay with, with uh, visual appeal, because that, that seems to be quite important. Um, so does the appearance of of a, of a reasonable amount of content. If there's too much in there, it's a real turn off. Um, I, at one stage, I combined two subjects, but put the content into the single eLearn, which meant I ended up with the scroll of death that went on and on, and it, the students didn't like it. It didn't work, and it was very hard to get out of once I, once I locked it in. So that won't happen again. Podcasts could be something I'll do next. Uh, we've got another teacher here experimenting with them and they seem to be working quite well. Students without English as a fir first language or students who have English as a second language like the opportunity to be able to replay what you're saying so that may be a useful thing to embed next time.